good morning to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I say good morning to your health, good morning to your career, good morning to your destiny, good morning to your finances. To all that concerns you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I say good morning. Let weeping come to an end, let darkness come to an end. May your destiny see light, may your path see light, may your endeavors see light, and may it grow, may it prosper. May you, as a palm tree, flourish. May you be as a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. May your season be every day, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, well, based on the title of the video, you know why we are here. And there are certain things that I, I want to say, I would like to share with all of us, the world on a whole. And um, it's regarding this BBC documentary made on the late prophet T.D. Joshua, whom I believe that was a prophet sent by God. Now you know where I get the good morning from. The good morning I always greet you with. It was from Prophet T.D. Joshua. Now, I have never met him personally, but this man has impacted my life so tremendously, even from many, many miles away, even from across the globe, he has impacted me. Now, I know you're not here to hear about my life per se, but let me just say, how I got introduced to Prophet T.B. Joshua. It was my mentor at the time who probably in 2011, we went to a church camp and he called me and then he, sh he wanted to show me a video. And that video was of wise man Daniel casting out many spirits from this guy called Eni, Eni Yiboka. And from that I, I, I never saw deliverance happening like that. And from that, I just was watching Prophet T.B. Joshua videos. I got introduced to Emmanuel TV. And I would always look at the videos until I got um, involved in my first deliverance session. You now, I've seen my mentor do it and I assisted him in doing it until one day in 2016, after a service that we had called Refreshing Time, there was a sister that came to me and said, you know, during the service, the Holy Spirit was telling her, come that we would pray for her, but she grieved the Holy Spirit. Anyway, she come to me um, for prayer. And I signaled to my mentor who was leading the service. Um, I, I led that night, but he was in charge of everything. And I signaled him to, you know, this lady wants prayer to come and, and pray for her. But, you know, he, he signaled me to go on. And so I laid hands on that woman, just as I saw Prophet T.B. Joshua and I, my mentor uh, um, did. And then I saw this woman start shaking and manifesting all sorts of things. Now, you could tell by that time I was excited because I've always seen it happening, but I've never done it before. And so now it happened, I, I got, you know, very excited, like, this is happening. <laughs> um, and so I, you know, it being my first time, I, I was, even though I watched a lot of videos, I was still, you know, a bit of an amateur so I was, instead of laying my hands properly, I was kind of like glancing my hand on, on her head. But um, all in all, at the end, my mentor stepped in, he helped me. And this, this woman was delivered from that unclean spirit who had done much wickedness to her. Now, this video is to serve as a warning to people. Now, throughout the video, you will hear me reiterating a number of stuff saying that i'm not saying whether he did it or not but there are certain things or certain ways we address certain things if we say we are believers no this documentary there are two things that we need to understand there are two parts no, I'm not talking about the three episodes. I mean, there are two parts to this documentary. One, there is an attack against the man, that is, the prophet, T.B. Joshua. And number two, there is an attack against Christianity 
on a whole. Now, we need to understand that. And when we are able to understand that, then we will see that the attack is from the evil one. And we are going to go and get into both of them. Now, firstly, we are going to look at the attack on the prophet. Prophet T.B. Joshua. Let me say this with no uncertainty of terms. Anyone who would attack, who would defame, who would try to paint in a bad light someone who is not there to defend themselves is demonic. I say this with no uncertainty of terms. Why? Because it is backed by the scripture. Anyone who would take on their own to say this about that person, to make that person look bad, to try to get people to stop following that person, to try to get others to disassociate that person, that person being a Christian, the person who they want to turn you against is a Christian. Anybody who would want us to do such things, if that person is not there to defend themselves, is demonic. Let's go to the book of James. James chapter 3. Now, everything I'm saying and I will be saying today will have scriptural backing. Will have scriptural support. And I may do three parts, just as BBC did. <laughs> we will see. So we go into the book of James, chapter 3. Let's see what the word of God has to say. From verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. Anyone who tries to paint someone in a bad light, to defame someone, to destroy someone's legacy, someone's reputation, when that person is not there to defend themselves, what are they doing? They are self-seeking. They want that you not follow that person, but that you flock to them, that you listen to them. They say, no, this person is not good. This person was never good. The word of God says, this is not godly. It is not from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. Verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, full of mercy. So that person who would speak bad concerning that person, if they were wise and non-demonic, they would have mercy, whether that thing that they accuse the other person of is true or false. They would have mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Listen, we all have faults. We all make mistakes. Let me see somebody in the world who has not made a mistake. That person doesn't exist, except for our Lord Jesus Christ. So we all have fallen short and made a mistake in one way or another. So that person who would paint that other person in a bad light, that other person who would try to turn people against that person is a hypocrite. And this, according to the word of God, is demonic. Now, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So by you trying to turn people, turn a congregation, turn a church, turn a nation, turn a world against an individual who is not there to defend themselves. Tell me, how are you an advocate of peace? How are you promoting peace? How are you pushing peace? You are not. You are an agent of discord, an agent of division, and this is not of God. No, I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm speaking about those who do such things. And we see the sort of light that the alleged victims were trying to place the late prophet T.B. Joshua in. Now, 
I saw a lot of envious people. You know the, the verse here is speak about where there is envy and self-seeking. I saw a lot of envious people. The way some of them spoke, you could hear the envy in their voice. You could you could hear that they, they wanted me to be in his position. But this is not why we are here. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 18. Now I have some of the scriptures written down just so that we can go to them, that I don't miss out anything. But in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 17, I could just quote them, but I would like, I want to read them so that we hear exactly what they are saying. The first one to plead his cause seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him. So why do you want to paint somebody in that light? Why do you want to defame somebody who is not there to defend yourself because the first one to plead his cause is right but if there is no one to plead their cause after then that one is right if the one who is accused is not there to say i never did it then the accusation would stand now mind you a lot of accusations were brought against the prophet was there any evidence <laughs> there was no evidence yet Accuse, and we will get into that word accuser in a little while. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 23. This is a warning, a warning to everyone. And I, I looked at all three of the episodes. And I looked at the comments. And I was like, these people cannot see the work of the devil. These people do not realize what Satan is doing, trying to separate us. Acts chapter 23, from verse 1 to 5. Then Paul, looking earnestly at the council, said, Men, and the brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded those who stood by to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. For you sit to judge me according to the law. And do you command me to be struck contrary to the law? <laughs> now, is that not what people are doing they dare judging the prophet according to the word no i'm not saying that he did not do it i'm not saying that he did it but they are there to judge him according to the word yet contrary to the word of god their judgment comes contrary to the word of god and we will see in a few minutes how it is contrary but let's continue verse 4 and those who stood by said, Do you revile God's high priest? Then Paul said, I did not know, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, You shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. This is the word of God. You shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. You would say, Was Prophet Tibi Joshua a ruler? Yes. See his global impact. Because of this ministry, see how many lives would change. See how many people he had doing the work of God. Whether it's humanitarian, whether it's spiritual work, whatever it is. He had a following of millions before they removed this first channel from YouTube. It had millions of subscribers. So yes, he is a ruler. And he was leading his people according to his revelation. So... You are not allowed, according to the word of God, to speak evil of a ruler of your people. In the book of Galatians, it speaks of that word as dissension. You know in football, when they give a player a yellow card because he is saying things to the referee he should not be saying? That's dissent. He get carded for dissent. That's dissension. Speaking evil of a ruler of your people is dissent. This is the work of the flesh. No. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 18. Let us see how they, contrary to the law, or contrary to the word of God, judge him. 
Matthew chapter 18. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him. This is straightforward. If I offend you, if I do something to hurt you, if I did something that, you know, I maybe got on your nerves or something, the word of God says that you come to me, you bring that complaint to me, that offense to me between you and me best case scenario i hear you and i ask for and I, I ask for forgiveness i apologize but in some cases i may not hear you but guess what the word of god makes allocations for if in case i do not hear or i do not listen or i'm just like get out of my face let's continue if he hears you, you have gained your brother. Verse 16. But if you will not hear, take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word will be established. So now, you come to me, I didn't hear. No, the word of God says, you, you go and get somebody else. Or even better, you go and get two more people that it would be three of you. So if you get one person, it's two of you. If you get two more, it's three of you. That the mouth, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So now the two of you, the, or three of you, come to me to address the situation. Why did I steal from you? Why did I do this? Why did I say that to hurt you? Why did I do such and such? Unless this is done, Every accusation brought against that party is not legit. It is out of order. The word of God tells us you get two or three by the mouth of two or three. So you bring this brother, you bring two or three, two people to this brother, and then now you address the situation. Best case scenario, he hears you and he said, you know what? I really did you wrong. And he apologizes. He asks for forgiveness. But what if he doesn't? Guess what? The word of God makes allocation for that as well. Let's continue. Verse 17. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. So the next step, after you going by yourself doesn't work, you bringing two people does not work. The next step is you take that matter to the church. You go before the church. You say, church, this brother stole from me. I told him. He didn't hear me. I took Sister Sarah. I took Brother Joseph. We went to him and he still did not hear. Church, we are bringing this matter to you now. This is the guidelines concerning the word of God. How we handle situations. Now, best case scenario. This man releases, okay, I really did you wrong. Let me repent now. But he may not. But you have to go through these guidelines first before you can bring that accusation, even publicly. You take it to people who are not children of God. If you bring him to the church, he doesn't hear. Then you say, no, this person is like a, a tax collector. This person is like an unbeliever. I have nothing to do with that person. But unless you go through the steps that God put in his word, you sit to judge the prophet according to the word of God, yet you do it contrary to the word of God. Mm. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's see what it has to say to us. I am not trying to say things based on emotion based on oh i was close to prophet tb joshua so I, I i have to defend him no what does the word of god say verse one dear any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints it's the same thing matthew was telling us instead of going to the church before the brethren 
to hash out the situation, to fix the situation. You decide to go to outside men, people who are outside of the church, people who have no love for the church. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments, if then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? I say this to your shame. It is so that there is, is there not a wise man among you? Not even one who will be able to judge between his brethren, but brother goes to law against brother. And that before unbelievers. How has BBC assisted Christianity? How has BBC assisted in the spreading of the gospel of Christ? How? Yet, we go to BBC to testify against our brethren. No, I am not saying he did not do it. I am not saying he did it. But whether he did it or not, there are ways that we address it. There are ways that we deal with it. But no, I have to get my 15 minutes of fame or my three hours of fame. The world have to know how this man wronged me. Was that the way of Jesus? For everyone who tried to paint Prophet T.B. Joshua in a bad light, the way that you do it, was it the way? Is it the way of Jesus? Is BBC run by believers? Is, is there any agenda in them for posting that documentary to boost Christianity, to help us in any way? No. None. So, this video is not for the alleged victims. It is for those who have heard and there has been confusion and division start to sow in the church. I looked at all three episodes and I looked at the comments and I'm like, these people, they do not see the work of Satan staring them in the face. They so try to paint prophet T.B. Joshua as an agent of Satan. They are not seeing that they are looking at the video of Satan trying to pit us against one another. Do not be deceived, children of God. If these people in the video, the alleged victims who testify, if they are Christian, we already see that they were in the wrong. Not saying that it's right for anybody to be molested, raped. I'm not saying he did but I'm not giving anybody any license to do that. But the word of God gives us a procedure that we need to follow. So if they are Christian, we see they went about it the wrong way. If they are not Christian, then we have no reason listening to them. Either they are Christian who are in the wrong or they are not Christian, which we have no reason, no business listening to them. Don't waste your time. These people, we listen to what the word of God has to say. So, this has been part one. Part two and part three, go listen to it. There is more we have to unravel. There is more concerning the word of God and how we react to this thing. Stay tuned.